Hey guys, how are you? Happy Sunday night. Um, or Sunday morning, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> As you know, I am a night owl now. You know, it's very interesting to go back in your career and see how certain people that you've worked for have evolved in their life. And yes, I've always been a singer, but I've always had to have a day job, of course, because, you know, my husband was disabled and I always had to work. And I was in the medical field. I was a medical secretary for several doctors um, over the, the 40 years that I worked. Uh, most of my experience was in medical offices doing secretarial work, either being up in the front or doing with a particular doctor. Now, back in 1992, when we moved from Tucson, Arizona to Dallas, uh, because my husband's brother had AIDS and he was sick and we knew he wasn't going to make it much longer, so we went to be with him. And I worked at Baylor for a Dr. Robert Collins, and he was in um, the bone marrow transplant program there. And I would, you know, of course, arrange his travel, uh, type up his letters. I even went into the OR to see a bone marrow transplant. It was really, really interesting. And I've looked him up. I keep, and I am just amazed at how amazing he has done now, he's not at Baylor anymore, but he's, now he's over at UT Southwestern Medical Center, and uh, he is so handsome. He was really handsome back then, and um, I, I kind of had a little bit of crush on him because he was so, he was just a sweet guy and very handsome, and... You know, it says here that he did his medical residency at Baylor in the bone marrow transplant. So I guess that's what was going on when I was there, and I didn't realize that. But now he is over at UT Southwestern Medical Center. He's seeing patients. He's the professor of internal medicine, director of the blood cancers program, transplant and cellular therapies program combined adult pediatric stem cell transplant program so he stayed in the same area obviously all of these years and what really really impresses me is that um he's got some some amazing accomplishments here um he holds the sydney and jl huff J.L. Huffines Distinguished Chair in Cancer Research in honor of Eugene Frankel, M.D., and is the R. Lloyd and Wiley V. Skaggs Professor in Medical Research, and a recognized leader in the field of adoptive immunotherapy. Dr. Collins specializes in blood and, uh -oh, blood and marrow transplant. I had a little ant there. Marrow transplantation and hematological malignancies such as leukemia, lymphoma, myeloma, Hodgkin's disease, and myelodysplasia. Um, let me get to the ones that I'm really, really interested in seeing. He has been named a U.S. News and World Report Best Doctor and is listed in Best Doctors in America and Texas Monthly Super Doctors. That is such an amazement. Dr. Collins is a recipient of the John J. Kenny Award from the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and has been honored with a number of other recognitions. So it is just amazing. He was just basically starting out when I was with him back in 92 and 93. And I'm just amazed at how well he has done. He's got 25 years of experience in bone marrow transplantation. Yeah. So um, I'm just amazed, you know. It's great to see how well, you know, he's done. And it was, I was at Baylor for... 
maybe two years. I started out in the heart center where we did all the echocardiograms and things like that. We transcribed them. And then when they downsized that department, I moved over to the bone marrow transplant program with Dr. Collins. So just to give you a little insight into what I actually did in my day jobs over the past 40 years, they were all in medical. I started out in a children's clinic in 1980. Oh boy, when we were in Tucson, Tucson, we moved there in, I want to say 87, 88. So I worked at the children's clinic for three years and we did physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, and audiology. So I typed up all the reports that those therapists, you know, transcribed. I ran the front office. And that was just amazing. You know, I, I loved the patients and the families. And then after that, I went over to UT Southwestern Medical Center and I was the secretary in the gate lab, which was actually a, a derivative of the physical therapy program where they saw patients with mobility problems. And so I was there for three years. And then we moved to Nashville and I start, I. Uh, in Nashville, I worked at um, Vanderbilt for a little while, about six months. Uh, that job really wasn't for me. I didn't really like it. Um, then I went from Baylor over to Centennial, I think. I did a lot of temp work uh, in between, you know, full-time jobs. I was at Centennial as a medical transcriptionist for a couple of years. And then that gig ended. I was there for like a year as a temp and then I went back as a full time. And then after that, I went to Middle Tennessee Medical Center as another medical transcriptionist. So that's pretty much been my career, my day jobs. And uh, that's why I am so uh, knowledgeable in medical things. And I, of course, I took care of Dave a lot and he was, you know, he had been an EMT as you know, Dave was top percent of the two uh, percent of the Mensa Society, and he, you know, we had a million books in the house because he, that's why he was so knowledgeable. He was always reading books, and I became very knowledgeable as well. You know, to, war, working with doctors all the time and taking care of Dave and learning about the diabetes he had and then the possible liver cancer. We, I don't think he had liver cancer, but we always, the doctor thought he did because the biopsy, you know, was atypical cells. And then the fact that he went downhill so fast after being diagnosed, um, don't really know. But anyway, that's a little snippet of what I did for my day jobs. What is that? Oh, great. Another mole. So that's kind of what I did in my day jobs over the past 40 years. And then when I got here, it was so strange. I could not find a secretarial job when I got here to Vermont. I had interview after interview, and I don't know what it was. I don't know if people thought I wasn't going to stay in Vermont. But <coughs> believe it or not, I got a job at McDonald's. And I'm telling you, I loved that job. It was... So, such a nice change from being in a high stressful call center, which was the last job I had. I was in the call center for the 10 care program, which is the Medicaid program for Tennessee. And that job was very stressful. I did extremely well in that job. I got promoted within a month and um, I did really well, but you know, they had a lot of expectations, a lot of requirements. And by the end of that job, I was a wreck, you know, and um, I had gotten sick and I had missed a lot of time and it was just time for me to move on, you know, and um, I found my cousins and I said, the hell with this, I'm going to Vermont. And then McDonald's was great. I was at McDonald's for a year. I absolutely loved it. I loved the, the customer interaction. <clears throat> I was at the register, loved it very much. After a year, I had to quit because I had hurt my leg. And um, I was on unemployment for a year, couldn't find a job. And then I went to Duncan and I was there for three years. 
until I had to quit because my, my car died on me two years ago. So quite an interesting career, all in the medical field and then into, uh, you know, re into customer service and fast food, which I absolutely loved. I loved it. You know, it was just so much fun. So that's me in a nutshell, besides all the singing. <laughs> all right, everybody, take care. And I'm just so proud of Dr. Collins. And I've got to start looking to other people that I work for. I figured most of them are probably passed away by now, but maybe not. You never know. I don't know how old he would be. He was probably back in his 30s back in 92. So, and they said that he was 25 years in the business. So probably he could be you know, 60s. So, anywho, everybody take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.